Hey everyone, welcome to another On Topic episode. It's just going to be me today. Uh, we've had a few issues trying to organize another sidetrack for you guys just with work schedules, but we hope to get one to you shortly. In the interim, I thought it might be nice to just produce some shorter episodes for you guys. And I've been to the Sydney Film Festival recently and I thought, oh, might as well chat about that. Don't know how many episodes we'll have, but we'll see. The first film I saw was John Farrow, Hollywood's Man in the Shadows. I'm a bit mixed about this one, to be honest with you guys. There's two different things the film's kind of doing. On the one hand, and the stuff I quite liked, it sort of gets behind this sort of enigmatic Sydney-born Hollywood filmmaker from the 30s, 40s and 50s, just sort of understanding the life he led. Uh, and on the other hand, it also sort of critiques, if you will, some of his sort of film catalogue. I much prefer sort of focusing in on who this man was more so than the latter. Um, there's certainly nothing wrong with listening to a bit of good film criticism, and they do offer some sort of thought-provoking analysis, the interviewees, but at the same time, I couldn't help but feel like it was a series of video film essays sort of strung together. You know, the chatting about this long shot, or his style as a whole, or the way he uses female characters, writes them, directs them. Yeah, it was okay, but just not my cup of tea, really. If anything, though, it did give me an appreciation of some of the innovative work he was doing before other prolific filmmakers like Hitchcock or Wells, especially with how he uses long takes. And there's certainly a number of films now on my <laughs> ever-growing to-watch list that I want to see of his, mainly The Hitler Gang, China, Wake Island, and The Big Clock, which was sort of his magnum opus. For the most part, this was a pretty competently made film, uh, and it, I guess it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested to know a bit more about Australian filmmakers or just Hollywood films in general from that kind of 30s through to 50s period. I will say there were a few sort of shots that kind of left me scratching my head. A lot of shots in the car just sort of easing through the streets of Los Angeles, uh, which felt a bit out of place. I know Hollywood is in LA, but from the films that were sort of discussed, it didn't seem like LA featured that prominently in his work, so it was a bit odd. Uh, and that was even including his more classic film noirs he made. I could have sworn I also saw a few shots out of focus with the interviewers, or it certainly felt flat or a bit smooth and not kind of crystal clear. When it did come to the film analysis stuff, I did quite like the uh, interviewees, so the film critics or filmmakers, who would kind of anchor the film within his personal life, so going to Wake Island, for example. One of the chaps that chatted about Wake Island said it felt quite real and wasn't very jingoistic, like you would expect from World War II features in the early 40s and that could have been in part due to John Farrow being enlisted in the Canadian Navy and just sort of the experience he had there. That kind of made it very gritty and real. I think the film also suffered by having a few interviewees that really didn't need to be included in the final cut. I appreciate that it would be kind of awkward to interview people and just completely cut them entirely. Um, I, I understand that, but there was one filmmaker who really offered nothing of substance beyond saying, oh, I like the casting of... John Wayne in this picture that um, John Farrow directed <laughs> and it was, it only lasted a few seconds but it felt very out of place and very unnecessary. You definitely get the sense that this is a passion project from these filmmakers who have a great admiration for this director and I think they should be pretty pleased with what they've produced. I just wish that it was a bit more of a focus on the man himself compared to the amount of time we spend kind of dissecting and looking through each film, as interesting as they might be. But that's about all on that one. I'd probably put this in the two and a half to three star range. So another film I've seen, which is going to be the second one I talk about today, was a movie called Apples. So this is one of those movies where I would say you don't really get an appreciation for what you're kind of watching until roughly the last 10 minutes or even the conclusion of the film. And then a lot of scenes that you previously sort of saw are given a richer context, which sort of makes you appreciate the whole. There's a lot of stuff you'll see in this film where you kind of go, oh, I, I do like the shot composition or the cinematography looks nice. But I don't really understand why I'm seeing this. And then once you get to sort of the end, you kind of get an understanding of why this was included, what this was building up to. So saying that, you know, that may impact your experience on the film in terms of if you want to sort of, I guess, be fed all the information as you kind of go in a more conventional narrative or if you're happy to sort of wait it out, as it were, experience the finale and then appreciate the whole. 
That's not to say the film's slow at all. It's quite entertaining for the most part if you're into kind of more minimalist, quirky cinema. The aspect ratio choice was quite interesting. It was more kind of like a box feel rather than your typical widescreen. And I guess this was a way to sort of localize in on his story. The synopsis of this film is we follow a gentleman who suffers from amnesia all of a sudden. He wakes up on a bus without having any ID, knowing who he is or knowing any of knowing who his loved ones are. So he's in the hospital, no one kind of comes for him, and then he agrees to work in this government program where they basically will give him a new identity. Each kind of few days to weeks, he's given a recording in the mail by one of his doctors. They'll tell him you should do X, Y, or Z, and then take a photo, and it's basically a way to create new memories for him and to create a new life for him. And these requests are initially kind of quite silly. You know, ride a bike, he attempts to ride a child's bike and then take a photo of it. But then as the film progresses, they get a a little more serious, a little more gut-wrenching even. Don't really want to dive too much more into it because I think this is a film to a sort of experience not knowing a whole lot beyond the premise I've given. But suffice to say, there are a few little twists and turns that kind of give you a different perspective of his character. I think the shot composition is pretty great and the cinematography was lovely. It's just a delightful little film to look at. This is very much a movie that relies on kind of visual imagery to sort of tell you its narrative and you have to kind of unpack what's sort of happening. If I did have to offer a critique of this movie, I would say that a few scenes might go on for just a few seconds too long. There's nothing wrong with having a longer shot, you know, to really build a certain emotion. But I do think that was sort of achieved in a shorter amount of time. And so I was thinking in my head and cut and cut. And when you kind of have that thought running in your head, you sort of think, oh, well, there's a bit of fat to trim. So having left the theatre, my initial reaction was to put this in a three to three and a half star range. But after sort of making a few notes, thinking on it a bit, and then chatting to a few people about it, this has kind of fallen very safely into a four star out of five. And it may very well go higher. I'd have to watch it again. This was a very lovely little movie, and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something a little different. So that's that. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, There's going to be a couple more of these episodes coming up in the future. Not sure how many, but I do hope you enjoy them as something a little different. And we will have a sidetracked podcast episode out to you soon, hopefully. But until then, thank you very much. And see you next time.